everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our 6 plus 6 series. And I am so excited that today in this video we are saving the best for last because not only am I going to take all the concepts I have been showcasing in this series and based upon what Allison has been teaching us in this class, but not only am I going to do that, if you hit that show more button, you are going to see so much fun. I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited. There are so many other YouTube gals that are joining in today to show their love for scrapbook generations and six by six papers. So please definitely spend some time this weekend, hit that show more button and visit all of those lovely talented ladies you're gonna see listed below. So excited. And so this is something that I'm just glad that everybody is excited to join in and just show their take, show their style, and show what they can do with six by six papers. Because I've only been showing some concepts that Allison has in this class. And of course, I have my own style. But listed below, you're gonna see so many different styles, so much talent. I don't even know how you're gonna contain yourself. You're gonna need a couple days to watch those videos. I'm so excited that these other YouTube gals are jumping in and playing along. So what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm going to be playing with the Pink Paisley Outfitters and also to uh, Paper Studio uh, at the corner of Chambray and Fabulous. So I'm gonna be playing with two paper pads, which I said that in the intro that when you play with a paper pad, it doesn't just have to be one per layout. Mix and match, mingle, have fun, all that good stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build on that concept, uh, concepts, plural, the concepts that Allison has been teaching us. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm so excited because I can't wait till I get my own video done so I can watch everybody else. I love how this scrapbooking community, this crafting community, always bands together so we can keep sharing and learning from each other. That is truly what makes this hobby the best because there's always something to learn every single day from every single person. So what I'm going to do with Allison, learning from her, is that I'm going to use a six by six papers as is. We talked about that, as is. I'm gonna use papers in uh, squares. Now look at these little squares here. I'm gonna use papers in strips. There's two by six, there's one by six. I even have some pattern paper that I could fussy cut maybe, play along with that. And then also I'm going to be playing with some Heidi Swap Washi. You know, we talked about the lovely Vanessa trick. I'll be playing with some, I'll be playing with some Washi. And then what else am I gonna be playing with? I wanna show you this lovely pack of puffies. <laughs> from the Heidi Swap Wolf Pack. So you know I'm going to be doing an outdoor page. And then what I wanna talk about next, and then I'm gonna come back with my finished layout because I don't wanna make this long, but I'm gonna show you my spin on it because I want you to spend time watching what everybody else is showcasing today. So much fun coming your way. <laughs> I'm just so excited. Is that I have a huge stack of photos here, and these are leftover photos. And I talk about this in our photo series, and that playlist will be linked to below. When I have leftovers, I keep them, or I share them, or I purge. I do a lot with my leftovers, but the ones I want to keep, I just keep them in my leftover photo box, and it's clearly a photo box, and it's tabbed per person. And so these are all my leftovers of my dad. And so you can tell there's a chunk and there's another chunk uh, behind me here there's just a chunk and so I'm going to be doing a review page about my dad and I say this all the time when you have leftovers just because you're done with the layout I've already done a layout with this photo and probably some other ones I've already done those layouts but I had extras so I keep them because now I'm going to tell another story about my dad and I want to give you this idea for a future layout for you and your family. Okay, so what I did was that I sent my siblings and both of my parents, including my dad, I sent them a text and I said, if you could give me one word, one adjective to describe dad, what would it be? So everybody in the family, all my siblings, I, there's five siblings and my parents, and so even my dad himself gave me, his, uh, gave me an adjective to describe himself. So that is what this is going to be about. And I was, I'm hoping that eventually I can do a layout about everyone in my family with everybody else's take on what we think of that person. So I will share the adjectives when I come back with the layout because when you see, what did I do with them? <laughs> when you see all these red alphas, 
you're going to see some words spelled out and that's because that's the adjectives that my siblings and my parents and my even my own dad gave me to describe dad so that's what we're going to do so that is one way to take these leftovers and make another story with simply leftovers from any year any event of they're all one person that's, I just had them tabbed on behind my dad's tabbed section and so I'm just going to grab a bunch of them and I'm just going to do a review page of nothing but my dad using these adjectives so uh, do that for the people in your family, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your nieces, nephews, grandbabies, fur babies, it doesn't matter, anybody. And then ask other people in your family or your friends, what's that one word that if you had to describe them, what would it be? And so that's the story I'm going to record today. <laughs> all these adjectives, and I w I'm happy to say that all the adjectives I received... <laughs> For all nice ones and uh, it's interesting if if someone was to uh, describe you in one word what would it be hmm. sometimes I don't know if I'd want to, want to know what that one word is for me on certain days of the month you know what I'm talking about but this I'm so excited to do this and I'm excited to share my spin on Allison's concept I'm also excited to share to record this story getting some descriptive words from your family members to describe you or someone else so that is how I'm going to start this come back and I'm going to show you my finished layout and then we're just going to talk a little bit more absolutely so hang on all right, I am back with my final and finished two-page layout in this series, playing with nothing but six by six papers and Allison Davis, her concept in her class. So what I did was I took all three of those concepts using six by six papers as is, using six by six papers as squares, and then also to using them as strips. And I incorporated all three of them into this one layout because I wanted to show you the versatility and I'm going to show you even more versatility when it comes to this class. So and a little bit of a tutorial so hang on so on the left this is really a wallpaper type of background this has so much weight to it it just feels manly <laughs> Yes, it does. So what I did was I have three horizontal shots that's going to go here. I do have a couple photos that are going to be covered up for privacy reasons. And so I will have another four by six horizontal going here. And then using my six by six papers from the Pink Paisley Outfitters as is. And then I gave them as is. I gave them a mat. Just again, playing with those papers. And then I also took pieces of paper from that pad, used them as strips. This one, I gave it a fishtail, used it as a little bit of a seam cover and a banner too fun and then on the right I again played with those six by six papers using them in two by six strips and then of course you can see I used squares so I'm going to show you how I did this folded paper technique it's so simple to do but it really does add some dimension to your page so we'll talk about that really like that very simple to do and very effective and of course you can see that I have 16 photos listed below in a very very easy collage they're just layered on top of one another and of course again i have a few covered up and then at the bottom i did two rows of washi completely easy so when you're using those concepts that alice has been teaching in that class i hope i definitely showed that you can scrapbook a lot more photos and you can complete a lot of more a lot more layouts in a shorter amount of time just changing your mindset about those six by six papers it's not just a piece of paper there's a lot of versatility with those six by six papers there's just a lot of versatility in this hobby if you choose to look for it yes absolutely it's all about learning and so on the left you can see that I do have four photo corners in the corner and then on the left my background is a very uh, craft the very very background is a craft and on the right it is exactly not that <laughs> I have no photo corners over here and I have no craft background so again in this series that is something else I wanted to show that whatever you do on the left you do not have to do on the right because sometimes in a paper pad you do not have enough paper to extend it on the left and the right so it's okay to mix and mingle and tingle and tangle <laughs> absolutely and then I just gave my layout a simple title called dad because that's what this layout is about is all review about my dad and then my journaling is simply those seven adjectives that my family and even my dad gave to describe him so this is a wonderful 
This is a wonderful layout to do for if you have leftovers, a review page about a certain someone or some place. It doesn't have to just be about people. This can be about a place. And if you struggle with journaling, adjectives. <laughs> yes, what we learned in English class in ninth grade, adjectives will be your best friend. And so all of these words came from other people's viewpoint on my dad. And then of course, playing more with flair and then using these triangle epoxy uh, stickers. I have trouble with that. And so I use that as a little bit of a reference because this is a matte paper. And of course it has to do with my dad's personality of being an outdoorsman and then uh, leading your eye down into my journaling, which is just seven words listed. And of course, for the beginning of each word, I added a basically like a wood grain enamel dot. And I will show you what those are from. Those are from the lovely Gina Marie designs. I will have the link below. These are perfect because they're they're muted and they're neutral and they're like they have a matte finish. They're not glossy as in something like this. So I will have that listed below. Very, very affordable. Need to look into that if you need masculine enamel dots or finishing touches. And then of course I played with that Heidi Swaff Oh, I'm sorry, Heidi Swap Wolf Pack in those epoxy stickers. And there's, I've added some bear and some wolves and some fox because that has to do with my dad. And then, of course, over here on the right, getting in those washy, those washy motifs that was in the Heidi Swap Wolf Pack. So glad to play with this because, you know, it's one of those things you buy new things and then you just table it and you don't play. So this winter or summer, whatever season you're in, get the new stuff out and just play. Absolutely. Of course, I just moved something here. And again, there are more of those Gina Marie matte finish enamel dots. Again, the link will be below. And then in those little folded circles, I have more of that Heidi Swap puffy stickers. Too fun. And then of course, I showed in the last video that if you have a lot of photos and we have those word stickers with the days of the week, use those on your pages. And if it is something that is repetitive, and in this case, these are trail camera shots that my dad sends to me all the time and he sends them every month of the year. So again, I took that same concept and I took January through December and I added those calendar dates sporadically on those photos. I don't think some were exactly off, you know, exactly correct. It didn't matter. I just want the representation of every month of the year he's sending me uh, trail camera photos. Always, He's always out in the woods doing something. And so let's play with this paper folded uh, technique up here. It's so simple to do. I've done this on some Disney pages. And now the paper I was playing with was this Hobby Lobby paper studio at the corner of Chambray and Fabulous. And what I ran into, because I wanted to use the camouflage paper, is that it's not double-sided. So what I did was I punch circles in this one and a half, uh, just this one and a half EK success punch. And of course that is, it's just a one and a half punch. And then what I did was I took some one inch squares because that's what we were playing with, one inch squares. And then what I did was I took that one and a half punch circle and I took a little adhesive and I put that square right in the middle. And you can tell that this one and a half inch circle with the one inch square fits in there perfectly. So I would adhere it down. And then all you do is you fold your sides. That's all that is. Okay. And I want to show you how quick this is. And then what you can do is you can use these embellishments in two different orientations. And I'll show that again. So you can use that as I did in my layout is that I gave them a more vertical look or what you can do is turn them and give them a more square look. I wanted this I just thought it looked better for my page. I wanted that angle. I didn't want the square. I wanted the angle. So instead of making it the square, I turned it and gave it an angle. Now, the reason why I put that little one inch square inside, because my paper was not double sided, double sided. If your paper's double sided and you punch a one and a half inch circle punch, that's what I use, but play around with the different sizes of punches. You would not have to do that inside one inch square, but I needed, I wanted that pattern. I wanted that brown arrow. Uh, and if my paper would have been double sided, I could have skipped the squares. But play around with your double-sided paper, play around with your circle punches, and do that simple paper folding. Now, if your paper, if your paper, sorry, I'm tongue-tied today. If your paper is double-sided, 
you can still punch out or cut out. I just used my trimmer, did some one inch squares, and you put that in the middle, and then that helps you fold your paper. You wouldn't adhere it. You just simply put that in as a template, and that helps you fold that paper. And I'll bring that a little closer here in just a minute. So say if my paper is double-sided, then I would fold my paper just as so, and then I would just remove that if my paper had been double-sided, and you, then you can play with that. And so again, you can use it in the square, or you can use it kind of like in a diamond shape. So that is a simple paper folding technique. We learned that a long time ago. And then also what you can do is you can glue down these flaps if you choose to, or leave them flapping in the wind is what I'm going to do. They will flatten in the page protector a little bit anyways, so I'm not gluing them down. But then you can see on the left, I did the same thing. And I did glue my flaps down because I put my flare on top of it. So again, another way to use that paper folding. And all it is is paper. And you're just folding it into a different design. So, And I think this looks good for masculine pages. I think it's very fun and festive for Disney pages, birthday pages, celebration. You can just use it on everything. All it is is a circle punch with a little square insert and you fold the flaps. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than that. It really doesn't. And I'll have some close-ups at, at the end so you can see that. So, of course, you can see that I did get those seven adjectives on there. I got some flair. I got 19 photos and I did use those three concepts, six by six papers as is. I did matting. I did banner strips. I did two by six strips. I used squares. I used circles, just playing with six by six paper pads. Very, very fun. And of course, playing with washi using that Vanessa trick. So don't forget to cover up those seams with different things that you have in your stash. Okay, so now, what I wanted to say is, let's talk about a giveaway. Absolutely, because I do want to thank all of you for joining in on the series and making it very popular and making it very fun. And if you head over to Deborah's Facebook group, a lot of those gals have been showing what they are creating so you can get even more ideas, absolutely. So I have a little bit of a giveaway because, because you came along for the ride. <laughs> get it came along for the ride I have a six by six paper pad but this really is a six by eight this is the Maggie Holmes carousel get it you came along for the ride absolutely <laughs> you know I'm always coming up with those alliterations right so the carousel six by eight paper pad because you can do the same thing uh, using Allison's class using six by eight papers eight by eight it doesn't have to be six by six and it does not have to be an actual paper pad to learn these concepts and then along with this of course I have another stamp set with that same carousel very fun very happy very magical and then of course the embellishments to go with it some fun pom-poms and some stars and I would tell you if you did this folded paper technique and put a pom-pom in the middle and then every other one you put a star or a sequin now that is a carousel <laughs> very very fun so all you have to do is be 18 be a subscriber and leave one comment below and it's open to everyone so another giveaway so if you uh, watched all the videos that was eight chances to win if you're an international it was seven chances us to win so definitely hop into every video and I will keep those open for a few weeks and then I will announce all the winners at one time and so then now let's talk about the next thing the next thing is that I definitely want to show with this class I wanted to do a little bit of a, of a review what we did and I wanted to give you some numbers as to what we did so of course we were learning in the beginning taking those six by six papers as is and just using them in, as they are in that six by six size and so I did a two page layout and then of course I also did an additional bonus again using that six by six paper as is and then again now we're doing six by six papers again as is but now increasing the number there was three and then I did a page protector uh, just to show how you could stretch getting more photos in. Here we did 
two or four, depending on if you did a two page or one page layout. So again, you do six by six papers as is. And then of course, what we did, we broke down again, going even smaller using those six by six papers, learning Allison's concept of squares. So that's what we did. Got a lot of photos on that and then going even smaller. And then we did some treatment with these squares. We did some embossing, very, very fun. And then of course, we went to the next concept of breaking down those six by six papers even more into strips. So we did a two page there. Again, what you do on the left, you do not have to do on the right, especially if your papers are limited. So don't forget to use scraps. And then of course, breaking down those strips even smaller into one by three, again, doing another two page layout and then playing with those papers even smaller and different ideas for playing with those papers. And then of course, to round it all up, uh, just taking all three of those concepts, six by six as is, strips and squares, and marrying them all together, it doesn't get any easier than that. So now let's round up and talk about the numbers because in this series, which I only had uh, eight layouts, but I did nine videos, uh, I did 19 layouts. And this was just a simple round. This wasn't me going through every one of those sketches. And I'm going to talk about this class in just a minute. And then how many photos did I scrapbook in this series? 105 photos. 19 layouts and 105 photos. And what I want to stress the most is I didn't even touch everything that Allison has presented in this class. No, I didn't. I only did a showcasing of a little bit of this. So there is a discount below. Definitely grab this class while you can. Uh, the discount will be listed below. It will be for a certain time period. So look at the details below and grab it. You're definitely going to, and you can see firsthand, all of these layouts, 19, and then playing with those six by six paper pads in different arrangements, different formats, and then getting 105 photo scrapbook, sign me up. Now I wanna talk about one other thing, is that uh, don't forget to enter the giveaways, that will be for a certain time period, and then also too, don't forget to grab this discount because you can see there's even more to enjoy. I only showcased a small sampling of that, so grab that. And then because Scrapbook Generations is so kind, okay, I want to show you something. So what I wanted to show is that with this Allison Davis 6x6 paper pad class, there's something else you can get along with it. And what is it? It is the companion class. I got some questions in this series. Do I own it? What do I think about it? And let me just tell you, if you love this class and you like the concept, which a lot of us do, as soon as this companion class came out, I didn't even think I hit the buy button and it is worth every single penny. But because Scrapbook Generations is so awesome, you can use that discount for this class and you can use that same discount for this companion. We call it volume two because all it does is expand and show you even more ideas. And remember in this series, I didn't even, I didn't even show everything in this. So can you imagine what's in this? Yes, absolutely. So use that discount, get both of these. And so in the class that we were showing as far as the series, there was 11 sketches. That's great. And you can see I didn't even do them all and look how much uh, I did. 19 layouts, 105 photos. So in the companion class or volume two, grab it at a discount, get it printed, keep it, and always keep it, is that there is 86 sketches. I'll say that again, a number eight, and a number six, 86 sketches in this companion class. Look how meaty that is. You just can't get any better than that. This truly is like four to six classes in one. You just can't beat the price point for what all you get in this. And then I've only scratched the surface. This is one of those things, it's so meaty, you just get to enjoy it and it gets like, it's like a fine wine. It just gets better and better every time you look at it. So definitely grab it below with that discount. And so I definitely wanna thank Allison Davis for creating this class introducing these concepts to us and then all the time and energy and effort she put into this companion class you know that took a lot of work it truly did and then I want to thank uh, Scrapbook Generations for allowing us to showcase this in the series they didn't have to do that but they want us to keep learning and scrapbooking and that is what this hobby is all about learning and sharing with each other absolutely so along with that sharing and learning 
hit that show more button below. <laughs> Look at all the ladies that are going to be playing along with more 6x6 papers. You can get more inspiration. You can just see a lot more playing in this series. Definitely hop in, show some love and support to our fellow scrapbookers here on YouTube, and have fun playing with this series. There will be some close-ups below. Definitely get your name into the giveaways. And you know how I end every video. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.